Welcome back to another episode of Classroom of the Elite, and as usual, a quick recap. But if you want to skip to the reaction, there is a comment, uh, the timestamp below if you want to jump to that. What happened last time? Kushida got completely outplayed, but how did it all lead to that, right? I think Suzune was really preparing, and I think Kushida, to a degree, got a little cocky on her support from Class C, spe specifically from Ryuin, right? And that's going to really burn her at the end. But leading to it... You know how I mentioned about Ayana Koji's birthday? Maybe that there'd be like a secret birthday party and it'd be like, oh, it's like a wholesome moment for Ayana Koji to actually celebrate his birthday with his new friends if he views them as friends. You know, have a little sentimental value. Didn't really happen. Didn't really happen. So his birthday was the day where his new f classroom you know, group was formed. But the important thing is none of them knew about it. K did know. K did know. Except she sent a little... It's not like I forgot or anything, but happy birthday, by the way, right? At, at least at least one person remembered. There's a scene where Ayana Koji kind of like um, looks at his text message. And I'm pretty sure you guys also mentioned that they're supposed to delete every conversation they have to avoid, you know, it's basically just get rid of evidence, right? Try to keep them. He didn't seem to delete the message immediately. There is some sentimental value there. No matter how, what kind of environment that he was growing up in, no matter how ruthless and cutthroat and try to be like, trying to kill out all these like, unnecessary human emotions i feel like there is still something in here for kiyopon right where he might still feel like a human i'm sure he does it's just he's suppressing it so well then again i'm not really sure exactly like i'm not even sure if he's like a is he like an artificial baby we have to get more of the backstory of the science lab with his i i would assume his dad that's also part of the research center but we're not gonna get that until scene three or four with that, i guess right so we have a new study group. There, I forgot the names already. I'm sorry, there's so many different names. I, There's a blue hair girl, there's a purple hair guy, and then there's our buddy Yukimura, right? But call him Keisei instead because I think uh, his other name was something his mom gave him and he said, fuck that bitch. She was actually, she just left me when I was young. It's like, makes sense, makes sense. Kind of got heavy, it's out of nowhere, but okay, thank you. The blue hair girl, she is actually quite nice and, you know, she's really good at like um like even like bringing up something like we should start off with like nicknames to keep everybody kind of break the ice immediately all the sakura comes in at the end and at the end it says no you can't join unless you got a nickname right so the blue hair girl is pretty pretty cool so far right pretty cool so far purple hair guy uh, he's just indifferent about it. i don't really know what's about that guy just yet other than that he was injured and he had to give us a slot for i don't know to race in the sports festival so that was like a plus i guess right so our study group is those four plus sakura because she finally comes in at the end so <laughs> she's <laughs> she bitch got big ass big ass twin tails and she's hiding in front of a pole like you know see, but it's like she's like standing out in the front it's pretty funny when she's trying to hide i still have no clue what her purpose is she joined in in our study group. She's still simping over Anakoji, and that's fine. Simping over Anakoji is something that every, every girl on this show does. But I feel like every girl still has some sort of role that they're supposed to play. And the fact that we invest... If I, I have expectations, right? And this might be just because of the, how the an, anime is adapting the source material. But if they're going to invest some time into a character, I expect some payoff. I expect something else in, in, in return. And granted, we did get the payoff in Sakura when we did save Sudo against the footage because Ryuin was apparently in the post. Apparently, Sudo was fighting Ryuin's crew and whatnot. And Sakura has some, you know, photo documentation that kind of helped us in the trial case. Yeah, I guess you could say it paid off there. But then afterward, you can't just put her to be like a jobber NPC. Like, come on. I expect something a little bit more with Sakura considering her design is pretty unique too. She joins her study group, but I'm still like... And... Are you setting something up here for us? Author, please, can you use Sakura for some greater good other than just like completely simping over Anakoji? I feel like that's something she has to, she doesn't necessarily have to get over it, but I would like her, like her role in the story to be something other than just simping over Anakoji every other moment again. But it is, it, those scenes are pretty funny. Another funny thing is how Ryuin always comes and visits us. And Albert's always in the back, like just like cross arms like this. It's, it's, he looks so stoic, but. Ryuin loves to visit us. He visits the little study group and says, Hey, what's up? I wanted to know. What did he even say? Like, he used to do this with Susan too before, right? He would just show up and like, Ah, oh, Susan And he'd like sniff her there. <laughs> like, dude, what are you... But he's got a little bit of charm. Gotta admit, Ryuin is pretty charismatic and kind of charming. Even though he's like a bad boy, that is the appeal, right? He might be a piece of shit, but hey, he's our piece of shit, okay? Ryuin comes and meets Anakoji. He seems to try to get, hmm, are you really, are you really this, uh, this, uh, what's it called? Not, uh, the mastermind called X. It's either you or Yukimura, right? Or, again, as we previously discussed, there's a, there's a chance where 
Ryuin is not thinking that these two are the only outcome, but rather these two, Keisei and Ayanokoji, are being used by X to kind of uh, set them up as the masterminds while the true mastermind by hides behind. There's so many like levels of like mind games that we're playing here to the point where now we're thinking too much, right? In fact, Ayanokoji really is the mastermind, but Ryuin's like, mm, that might not be the case, so you overthink it, and then that, in fact, makes you dumb for overthinking but it's in hindsight how could you ever figure that out right the, the 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 fact that they can even like think about these kind of options is kind of crazy but if you think about it in these kind of shows understand that this is not happening live spontaneously like the author has already thought of it and he's displaying he's like reverse engineering kind of how it all happened right if you understand what i'm trying to say but they are pretty smart they are they are, they are pretty smart right there's another girl that Ryuan brings over, um, Class 1C, Shina Hiyori. She's a really cool design. She's just able to kind of discern. Her ability is to sniff out if people are important or not. If you, if that's the case, then she did a really shit job because she said to both Keisei and Ayanokoji, right? Wow, they look so plain and average, I can't even possibly think that they're anything special. <laughs> Ayanokoji doesn't look that NPC-like, does he? Maybe she does? Maybe it's because we know what he's done that he looks special to us. But from an outsider standpoint, maybe she does look like a casual average NPC where if you put EK beside him, you couldn't even like discern who's the special one here, right? In fact, I'd say even Casey has a better, more outgoing design based on his, I don't know, haircut compared to Anakoji and his hair color. But Anakoji is doing a very good job. He's doing a very good job hiding himself so far. And then Ryuin just leaves saying, Okay, that's enough for a little visit even though no one invited me. I'm gonna leave now. It's like, okay, too. Bye, I guess. <laughs> he already does help out with like... When when they came to the table, did you fucking... He stomped on a coffee cup. But he already does give her saying, Hey, here's another cup. Oh, sorry for that. She seems like a nice girl. I wonder if she's gonna get abused and not really leave class C, I guess, like everyone else. But most important thing about this intro scene, uh, sorry, the, the beginning part of the previous episode is to establish our new study group with Sakura, and maybe this will be like a um, reoccurring important social connection that Anokoji could maybe rely on. Uh, maybe uh, other than for like using them as strategic weapons and like this mental warfare, but rather some sort of like social community where he can, I don't know, act like a normal human. <laughs> Rather than always being like this mastermind all the time, right? What else happened? K <laughs> K was K was so excited when she got a call from Anakoji saying, "I'm actually going out somewhere." I think, what, what did they say? We're going out shopping or something? And K was like, "Are you bringing me?" It's like, no. It's like, oh, fine then. Well, still happy birthday by the way, right? They got some dynamic. They got some nice dynamic going on. She also K got another mission to <laughs> to basically just shit on Kushida, right? K's like, really? Is this really part of the script? Like, yep. You you have to throw you have to throw the juice on her on her on her uh, jacket. So she stands up, immediately calls Kushida on her bullshit, saying, "You are so fake. You don't care if other people get expelled, do you?" And then she just throws the fucking juice on her jacket. And I immediately thought, jacket, hold up. Now we get to take it. Fingerprint? Remember going back to the fingerprint titty grab? The reason I still focus on that is because that's been mentioned and I thought it's such a ridiculous thing that she could still use as leverage. And I've already said uh, before that she probably has like different copies of the uniform. It's probably like laminated and sealed away in like a little cryogenic chamber just in time when, oh, I can finally use my fingerprint as leverage that like you grab my titty, therefore you rape me. Some kind of excuse against Ayanokoji. Yeah, that's gonna maybe never happen, but... That wasn't the case with the juice, right? The juice was to put a little cheat sheet on her. And that bites her in the ass in the most kind of like embarrassing and condescending way that Ayanokoji could humiliate her. Because the cheat sheet kind of implies that... Well, there's multiple things with the cheat sheet, right? The fact that she didn't even realize that the cheat sheet existed. But also the fact that if the cheat sheet was found, then she gets expelled. Someone's out to get you. But also that cheat sheet wasn't even uh, associated with the right test that she handed it in. Kind of to show that... Ayanokoji knew that you wouldn't even get the right answers that Ryun gave you. You were expecting because of the different trade options that we handled at the end of the episode, right? So, good job, K. She's still doing great. Kushida tries to hand in, the, you know, the, the question sheets to the teacher. And the teacher's like, okay, sure. Just completely acting. But Suzune was already there. She completely anticipated that Kushida would try to do some bullshit like this, right? Suzune... Big brain. This is something that Aaron Koji also mentioned, but she 
acted independently and she succeeded this time without really Anna Kojima. Even though he did cover her at the end, which is maybe not necessary, but still, Susanne did this all by herself, went to the teacher beforehand, told her, hey, some bitch is gonna come in here saying that this is the only question, uh, the the test that you, that you should be getting. Don't trust, don't, don't trust her. Only trust what I sent, right? Because she's just gonna lie to you, right? The teacher shreds that shit immediately. And then, what other scenes were there? There's more scenes of how Hirata says that, wow, K really... You can see how K um, gets very defensive around Yana because whenever other girls are around, you can... I've never seen her act, like, have this much interest in a guy that Hirata says, which is kind of sad. Well, it's, it is sad, but it's not sad because their relationship isn't actually a real one. Hirata's just doing this for the sake of the public image, I guess, and for K, right? But Anakoji, Anakoji, do you understand that K is just head over heels for you? Probably. Would he act on something to have someone to properly the date? Would he... I would imagine that they will date in the future, but it's like, would he initiate? Maybe she would. Maybe she would initiate and it's gonna catch, catch K out of, like, um... It's, it's gonna be so unexpected. She's like, what? Really? It's coming from you? Oh, okay. But still ulterior motives for the relationship, some kind of other image to uphold to, I don't know, play this mental game with Ryuan, or truly out of love. Does he know how to love? Probably, but he has to suppress it so much because that's how he's grown up. Kind of sad to think about. Kind of really sad. And that birthday scene text message is pretty sad too. Pseudo does pass. Pseudo does extremely well. He passes, but Kushida, when she finds out the question bank, what the fuck, Ryuin? That, this isn't what we agreed upon, right? You were supposed to give me the thing. And the simplest way that I can explain about what happened between Anakoji and Ryuin at the end, right? Why Kushida didn't get the proper one is because Anakoji told Ryuin beforehand, hey, I got a key player that already outplayed Kushita. She's not even gonna get like the answer sheet that she pr the question bank that she provided. It's not. It's already shredded. It's not happening. Therefore, I'm gonna give you two propositions. An impossible one where I think it was something about like giving all the answers to him related to the other test questions. Or, or right. What was the other option? I forget. I fuck. I forget. What was the second part of the deal? What was the second part of the deal? Fuck. I, it was. Hold on. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me in exchange. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. It was, alter the question sheet, right? Anako just said, agree to the trade as expected. Give me Classy's confirmed paper shelf of questions and she didn't answer. That's the first one. That's just too much, right? It doesn't really give Anako, I mean, it doesn't really give Ryuan any benefit to do that. But the other one is, or fuck Kushida over instead, right? Greatly alter the question sheet you gave to Kushida Kikyo. Knowing that her, what Kushida is expecting has already encountered, Ryuan's like, eh, you know what? Sure. All right. I'll I'll play with you this time. I'll I'll agree. I'll I'll just fuck over Kushida instead because we're already fucked regardless, right? That's kind of what happened. I think Kiyofun really does like texting Ryuin more than K. And I talk about this in a very comedic gesture way because there's no actual Yaoi romance going on here. No, but it's funny when you kind of shift the narrative. It's to like, oh, I don't know loves you know Kiyofun loves texting Ryuin a lot more than she he does texting K. But to a certain degree, I think that is true. I don't know. I feel like they're having a lot of fun. I think like. Cause like so far I've seen Ryuin as like a threat. But you guys also mentioned in the previous episode that I'm wrong about my assumption that well I I didn't really have an assumption, but I didn't think that he would mind if Susan and Ankoji were also expelled according to Kyo's plan, right? But Ryuin doesn't really want that to happen. In fact, he enjoys this little mental game. In fact, maybe past this initial arc, is there a possibility where Ryuin becomes like an accomplice? It's always fun in these kind of shows where the enemy right now in the in, in the past becomes like your ally in the future to overcome like a common uh, enemy again. So it would be pretty interesting if Anakoji and Ryuin does have some kind of secret relationship in the future where they, not like that guys, but like where they basically kind of help each other out and I don't know, act as masterminds behind the scenes. Maybe I'm getting too out of myself. Maybe that's not going to be a case. Maybe... The punching scene really is in the trailer, right? That was shown in like the season two and season three trailer. Maybe that was really directed to Ryuin. I don't really know. That's what I'm going to guess after he hurts K or something. And therefore, they could never be friends. I don't really know. I'm trying to think. But in the end, Kushida got betrayed so hard. And does she deserve it? Yeah, I, I think so. She got so cocky. She thought that she was one step ahead of Ayanako. She thought that she was really ahead of us, right? But 
Even trusting Rewin, you can see that you got betrayed, you got burnt just to simple, just like that once you real once you realized you had no enough value for him, right? What will Kuchita do? I think the redemption arc might actually happen. We do have leverage on Kuchita's backstory to the point where if Kuchita tries to do something dumb, we can basically Alright, let, let's just say um, I'm going to expose all your dark secrets too and ruin your life at this school too. So it doesn't do you any good, right? Because that's kind of what she doesn't want to happen. She wants to have a fresh start here, right? But also now that she doesn't have... Well, the relationship between Ryu and is a little bit shaky. And Susan does want to not give up on Krista. Meaning there's a possibility where Krista could really help us in the form of a double agent if she does come around against Ryu. Then again, it seems like Ryu and Krista's... I don't know, it's, it's just one encounter where he kind of fucked her over, but let's just say that this relation, this like, uh, Krista continues to act like a part of Class C to put down Class D. But in fact, Krista has come towards us, realizing I really have nowhere else better to go. I might have stick well with Anna Koji and just act nicely at least, right? If that's the case, maybe double agent thing going on with Krista? I don't really know. At the end, Ryuen, even though... The deal was successful. You seemed a little bit pissed off, like, oh, you think you can pull this shit off? Mastermind X? You think you're getting a little cheeky. You th know your place, right? Even though I think he should know his place. He sends a, a picture of Kei to Anakoji, right? Without knowing that he's Anakoji. And at that point, I was like, how would he know that the Mastermind has close ties with Anakoji? Well, it's as simple as, I didn't really think about this previous episode, because whenever I'm doing this live, it's hard for me to process all the information that's been happening before, because it's all impromptu. But when I have a week about it, I can kind of think, and your comments also help me out. Basically, you know what happened? How would, how do we figure out who was the spy for in Class C, right? Oh, it's because K was getting bullied, and Anakoji happened to get, you know, a phone recording of those bullies bullying K. Therefore, the Mastermind X must have some close ties with K. If K decides to act out though, right? If K, sorry. If I don't now this is a game of, okay. I sent you a picture of K, meaning she's gonna be probably in some kind of threat. Is Alva gonna fucking break her arms or something? I don't know. But this is like a blackmail, right? Saying, don't fuck around with me. I know who's close to you. I can hurt them. What could I don't know do now though? Cause he says at the end, he'll play with your rules. He'll play in your own like playground. Your, your choice, your map, pick it. I'll play and I'll crush you. He's pretty confident, and I have no doubt that Aonokuji can do it. It's just, it's probably gonna blow my mind how he does it. I think we're going into the final arc of this season. I believe it's 10. Is this already episode? No, I think this is episode 10 now. So 10, 11, 12, 13. Four episodes to encompass this final arc. Maybe this has to do with the final game between Aonokuji and Ryuin. Maybe at the end of the season, and Koji's identity will be revealed, but maybe he'll intentionally reveal it. I don't know. How long can we keep this X identity hidden for? I don't really know. Only one way to find out is to watch the episode. But hey, let's get started with this week's Classroom with the Elite episode. I love how Anakoji is in the middle, though. He's the main. Oh, Sakanagi and Nichinose? Hmm, what are you talking about? We haven't seen Nichinose since the uh, beginning of the season. What are they conspiring? Ichinose's strength is basically that. She, she does make me uncomfortable because she's so polite and bright and happy, but in that way, it's it's different the way that she operates. That's exactly. She, how can she even be real? Maybe she's fake. Maybe! I wonder what she's really like. Is she also putting up a mask of facade like Kushita? Maybe she is just that good though. Sakura is just making a point. Maybe she is that good. Kay and her friend also is into Anakoji a bit. Someone following you? Ryuin's... That's Ryuin's lackey. You're being followed. Bro, you could try harder to not be so... You can't stare at your target. At least be discreet unless he's trying to be intentional about that you're being followed. Like... Oh, the other person that's been stalking the study session, that one that, okay. Who was it? Who was it? Who was it? Class B? Class A? Sakayanagi spying on... <laughs> good job, K. good job. Sakayanagi is spying on Adakoshi? What? It's uh, Hiyori. She can't reach it. He needs a tall, strong man to get it for her. Come on, pick it up. Come on. Come on, big guy. Wuthering Heights. Got it for you. Hello. So cool. So cool. Mm-hmm. He's just a regular NPC average dude. Yep. 
Nothing else, nothing more. I wonder if her appraisal of Anako just changed. Hmm. You, the way that you're talking is not pushy, but... Huh. They're kind of vibing. But you have one in class Dina you can talk about with. Yeah, you. But how, how could it possibly be him if we're already close, you know? No, you've already passed the suspicion list. You're too average. Oh? Not interested in all the fighting. Do we truly believe her? I want to believe her. But it's a game of deception. Someone reception room. Is there a visitor? His dad? His dad? The white haired dude from the tr from the opening. His dad? That's in the rooftop. That's against a bunch of suits. <laughs> white haired dude, your son. It's his dad. We're seeing us down. What's the relationship? Friendly? Hostile? Indifferent? Huh? Wait, you don't have the white hair. That's black hair. Oh. I was wrong. Completely wrong about who Anakoji's dad was. I thought it was the white haired dude on the on the rooftop. From the trailer, because he was on his side. It, it was him and Anakoji, the white haired dude and him, Anakoji, and against a bunch of suit dudes. Come on, sit for dad. A man's dead? Dead. No, I don't, but tell me more. She died? Helped you escape me? Meaning, the school. She escaped under. Really? Would he set a fire on himself? Really? Buddy, are you telling me that you lit him on fire for telling him the school for Anakoji to escape to? What in the world to get his is for his own freedom to get away from you i guess ultimate education even though we're not really studying or anything we're just fucking doing mind games to get into class a worldly society reject there's so much things going on in his dialogue what was the path that you set out for him okay i don't know he has to agree what's the white room what we talked about here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where other kids were kind of like dropped, has resumed operation. Other kids are also part of that now again, more? It's his, you're, he's your son, not your finest, most prized possession. You're talking like a specimen, but... Because you're my son. I, I, it's very transparent. I know you don't give a shit about me. You don't have to say that. <laughs> That's a transparent lie. <laughs> I know you don't give a shit about me, Dad. You don't have to say that. And Dad's like, yeah, I know you figured that out. If not, what? Then other people related to him would die, just like the butler? The white hair dude! The guy that I thought it was his dad. Was he the main doctor? Sakayana? Sakayana is dad? Holy oh, shit, they go far back? What the fuck? Yeah, her dad? First time meeting? First time meeting ever? I thought in the back in the day, the white room days, I saw someone like him outside. I was like a doctor, but maybe not. I'm a Koji sensei. Wow. God, his dad's voice is so deep in it. <laughs> Who recommended him? Other sources are supporting Anakoji from behind the scene. This has completely derailed the plot, though, from what we were doing against Ryuin to something beyond that. Sakayanagi, he is totally on Anakoji's side. Yeah. What do you mean this time when you're gonna come back and say drop out again? What was the warning though he said? What would you do? For now. He does. Was he the principal doctor before? I feel like I remember him from like season one's like the white room scenes where I saw like a doctor with white hair like him. 
Sure. <laughs> the teacher herself is obsessed with reaching class A. But the right cards have shown up. Mm. She's obsessed with getting class A? Wonder why, other than... Because, like, she doesn't need to go to... I don't know. What does she get out of it? I, I don't know. Better salary? Ah, uh, that's... Personally saying, because the framework that he's laid out has already begun its climb to rank uh, A class. The same thing as before. Nothing. He does everything. I'm not gonna answer you. Dota World! The teacher, we seem to have something over the teacher now. Because obviously her goals are... Oh, her legs are... <laughs> Whatever she does that with her legs. You doing something on Christmas? No. Christmas. No. Because that's the entire point of Suzune and Hirata and you and other people. No, that's not... No, we don't want to support. No, 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 no. no. We want to put other people in those positions. He doesn't care about that. No, that's the last thing he wants. No. That part was cool. The school festival was sick. Didn't call her K though. Call her Karu's out there. Apologize. There's a lone Christmas tree right beside him too. Oh. 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 You're gonna sway her hard again if you keep talking like this, man. Is he really giving up? Mm -hmm. Our last conversation? Don't say that. <laughs> Why? Already? It's only been a couple episodes. The fuck? I thought we were gonna go to distance. I thought we were special. What the fuck? Come on, don't don't say this is. Don't don't don't. Don't don't. 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 You baited me with the Kyokai ship, and now he's ripping it apart. Bro! <sighs> is this to protect her? Is this to... I... It is so cold. But it's in character of what he always have done. Yeah, but... Maybe she does! I don't know, I feel like there's something more. Arukochi, don't you feel something? I can't even see his eyes, I can't ever tell what he's thinking, but... Three minutes in the dot. Done. Is that really the last call? There's no way it's the last call, right? He's gonna continue fucking texting Ryuin, though. Oh, dude. Come on. This is sad as fuck. What? Is that the episode? Is there a post credit scene? Man, I am devastated. I'm actually fucking devastated. I can't believe I got baited by the Kyo K shippers. And I'm I'm sure it's still gonna happen because I've seen like other like light novel images like Kyotaka and K together. You know, probably like I think there's like one fan art I saw where they're like sharing a fucking scarf. Anyways. Why is he behaving like this? I is this another another plan to deceive everybody while he goes behind the scene and it only works if everybody thinks that he's out of the game. But psych! He was actually in the game and you all got fooled! Something like that. Or or Maybe he truly does feel this way after laying down the framework. And at the end of the day, maybe it wasn't about getting to class A because when he's talking with his dad, it seemed like it was more about he escaped here, right? And this is all about him having his own freedom to live independently aside, like away from the white room and all that bullshit, right? The dad was talking about the greatest path that he set out for Adam, which is the one what the greatest path is. I don't know, but there's, there's, okay, here's what I think is gonna happen. We're getting baited as the audience, we're like, the mastermind's going away, but all, all, but everything that you've worked so hard, it's, it's, but what do you mean you're just going away, right? It's either a case of what I said before, where it's actually, no, he's not going away, he's just saying he is, but he needs to make everybody fool so that he can do his thing and become the mastermind again, or he really does intend on stepping back. But Ryuin gets involved and starts, I don't know, antagonizing Kay and hurting her, and then he has to show up and protect everyone again, or make, because like, or... He just does get revealed as the mastermind somehow while protecting K, and therefore he has the obligation to continue his duties leading Class D from the shadows as much as he can. But... Dude, I... I can't... I... Poor K, man! What the fuck? It's so crazy how the most, like, intense moments of, like, anime, like... In, like, 
the most intense moments in these kind of anime is like the conversation that they're having. It's not like crazy fights or crazy battles that's going on with crazy animation. It's a simple voice call between An Koji and Kane. It has me just like clenching. I'm like, what do you mean you're going away? What? Right before Christmas too. This seems so lonely and cold, but it is in character for An Koji to be like that. When he's talking on the phone, you can barely see his eyes. Usually you can, and it says deadpan eyes. But I wonder if thematically he does feel a level of sorrow and sadness and a little bit of regret, maybe, while he's talking like that. That's why they're intentionally not showing us his eyes to make us think that maybe he does truly feel that way. Because usually he just has deadpan eyes anyways, right? Maybe that's just a little touch. Or maybe I'm trying to <laughs> trying to psychoanalyze Anakoji who really doesn't give a shit. Who's such a sociopath? He's fucking calling beside it low. He's calling this by he's sitting himself beside a Christmas tree by himself and just talking like that. I, I come on now. There's gotta be more to it than that, right? There's gotta be more to. It. They're gonna go on a Christmas date, right? They have to, right? I don't really know. Let's go back to the scene with his dad. The dialogue was very interesting because the dad. So I thought the dad was Sakayanagi, right? Because all I seen was from the opening was they're on a rooftop. And there is this white haired dude who seems to have similar kind of hair. The only thing is it's just the bangs like that and going out. And then there's Anokoji versus a bunch of black suits. The black suits is actually is his dad and this is part of the operation. He doesn't see Anokoji as the son at all. Not even close. He sees him as this prized possession though. Most gifted, most talented specimen that's ever graduated from the white room. I don't know. What is the purpose of the white room? Is this like secret human superhumans that they're building up for the government for, I don't know, to become elites? Spy ops, that's his goal. Because he talks about the greatest path. Meaning, you're not just going to go to the school and become a regular average salary man or just like work as like a doctor or engineer or whatever, boy like that. Your goal is to be the next president of Japan. I don't know. I don't know what the greater path he's talking about. But it's necessary to have an environment such as the white room where well, I, I can only guess what's happening in there. Seems like they're gathering a bunch of talented kids and they're forced to go through these different tests. What we see in season one in the flashbacks where all the kids start to a little bit drop out one by one. They like start clenching their heart and die out, right? Are they feeding them special drugs to do that? I don't know how they would just die off like that. But it seems like if you don't, maybe there's a correlation between if you don't perform as well, you do just drop off. And their entire process is to have a good big cohort and call them one by one to see who can rise to the top. And that is the whole point of the white room. For what exactly? I don't know. They're just trying to cultivate like an army of superhumans, I guess. Aonokoji was, uh, was able to escape, right? The butler was able to help him escape. And the dad is now threatening him, saying, Hey, other butlers that you might have been fond of might die too. But Aonokoji is like, do you, do, you, do you look at this? Do you see this face? Do you think I gave a shit, dad? Come on, get the fuck out of here. The dad really has no power right now. He had to make Aonokoji sign a notice of withdrawal for him to actually back out. Right? But that's not the case. That's what's happening. And Koji said, there's no way he's going to sign it. But then he s leads that up with, or else. Or else what? What could the dad do? Is this authority so big that he would just shut down the school itself? I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. But the dad seems like the big key player, like an end game player that's happening. But you know whose dad I'm really interested in? Koenji's dad. What the fuck is going on with that? We haven't seen Koenji in a while, but I hope that we get to see more Koenji scenes. Sakayanagi's dad, Aris, Arisu's dad, right? It's kind of, I'm referring to them as like their last names. When I say Sakayanagi, you might think that I'm talking about Arisu, but Sakayanagi in this context is actually the director of the school, right? So he's, so he talks about how the school is structured by the, wait, what, what was even the scene when he entered the room, right? He, they seem to have, like they, he used to work for the white room too, right? Calls him Anakoji sensei. Sakayanagi and Anokoji goes way back, right? Sakayanagi has left. It's been seven or eight years since I left my position as your personal secretary. Secretary to become the director, right? Because, and took over for my father here as chairman. So even his, his father, so Aris' grandfather was the chairman. That's kind of crazy. Very important key members. He's acting as a director. I wonder why he left as a secretary. Maybe he started to realize the white room is pretty fucked up. Maybe we should stop doing this. Maybe, maybe I'll just get out of here and lead this classroom with the elite instead. His father was the chairman before, but then he took it over his son. And now his daughter is also in class A. But he said specifically he doesn't give her any special treatment, right? 
he will seem so it's not like he's there's no way that he's told Arisu about Ayano Koji, right? About like, oh, he's actually a secret lab child. You should keep in a quick, you, you should keep a close eye on her, on on him, because I don't think that's happened. But Sakai Nagi was still able to figure out that Ayano Koji was a key player from like season one. She's always had a close eye on him. She's always been kind of like looking at her, him, and then kind of like snickering. So I'm gonna assume that Arisu does know what's up. The true mastermind. He's just probably thinking, yeah, it's probably Ayano Koji. Plus, Arisu was kind of like talking about that with another teacher too at that time, right? Sakai Aneng is a director and he protects Ayano Koji in this school. This is a safe haven for Ayano Koji, right? Everything goes along with school rules and we prioritize people's independence, right? There was another talk about the recommendation. So it's not like these tests and entrance shit. It's Those are just formalities, right? You wanted Ayano Koji in here, specifically. So is Ayano Koji an important... Like, beyond the school, I'm thinking, like, does Sakai Anagi want specifically Anakoji to be part of the school so that eventually he can grow up to be, like, a key member somehow that opposes this Anakoji's faction? I, I don't know. I really don't know. So many different things are happening all of a sudden. Before, it was just little... Now, all the little childish, like, little mind games that we're having with Rewind seems a little bit childish in the grand scheme of things towards what, you know... Anakoji Sensei is thinking about the greater past, the white room, versus what Sakayanagi is now talking about, how they go back in the past and how they're we accept the students based on merits, but it's like we actually accepted Anakoji and secretly in. He's secretly really pushing for Anakoji. Well, it's not really secret. I think Anakoji's dad realizes what's going on here. Why is he going so far to protect Anakoji in this environment? I don't know. Maybe he just has maybe he feels after serving as a secretary with the white room. For that long he realized this is so inhumane this is so immoral i feel the need of the kind of duty to basically back away from that project but also save somebody that i might have been fond of a long time ago such as ayana koji right maybe that's all there is to it so i guess the rooftop scene it's gonna be pretty epic unless it's just like an opening visual image because like in the opening scene there's like a really cool scene of like there's ayana koji and there's sakayana against ayana koji's dad and everything I'm like oh what's going on here a little bit more is making sense. But after this discussion, Ayano Koji seems to be, be like... Also after that discussion, he talks with, you know, the teacher. And the teacher has her own personal stakes to reach class A. But Ayano Koji's like, I ain't doing this shit anymore. I'm not going to carry you for free anymore. I'm out. But the framework that I set up, it's already underway. It's already operating by itself. So actually, I don't really need to be involved as much. I really don't buy that Ayano Koji backing out all of a sudden. Then again... His wish, like, his entire motivation to cla get Class A wasn't his own motivation, was it? It was Susanne that declared everything, and Anakoji said, sure, I'll help you out. And now he's laid out a foundation where Susanne and Hirata and other key members can already, already work independently to maybe reach there, and Anakoji, Anakoji is backing off. Maybe all that really matters to Anakoji is just his freedom. Maybe that's all he cares about. As long as he's away from his dad's clutches, as long as he's away from the white room and all that bullshit, he can just live his own average NPC life, that's all he wants. Ayano Koji just wishes to live a quiet life by himself. But there's just no way that he just does not push for Class A beyond this. Other things will happen that inevitably brings him back into the game. And the most obvious thing that's probably going to happen is K getting in danger and Ayano Koji feeling like he needs to save her. In doing that, maybe his role as the mastermind does get somehow exposed and therefore now it's no point trying to hide. You're already kind of exposed. You need to play the game. Maybe that will be the progression of the story from now on. But very interesting. There's another scene with like uh, Hiyori talking with um, Ayano Koji about books, right? So now we have another in with Class C. And it's a genuine kind of like a... It's like, it's like a genuine a common interest in books between Hiyori and Ayano Koji, right? She has no one that she can talk to about this in Class C because they're all just like Yakuza members. But she has an outlet with Ayano Koji. And this is going to be pretty beneficial for us, definitely, right, moving forward. She might not be a spy, but I think she can be... Just having more, like, allies in different classes is always helpful, right? Although it could lead to betrayal, but I doubt that that might happen. So Christmas is leading up. Is he going to have a date? I would hope that Anna Koji gets a little date with K or something, man. I don't know, like, a New Year's kiss? Is, am I asking for too much? A New Year's kiss? Some kind of Christmas gift from K to Anakoji and Anakoji to K, you know, something like that. And be like, you know what? I'm not going away. I'm here to play the game. But so far, this is the saddest episode. I can't believe I got fucking caught up with K. Kiyotaka, man. This is what I... This, 
grown ass man gets too invested in fucking fictional 2D JPEG relationship and gets devastated. What am I doing with my life? Anyways, hey, if you stick around this long, if you don't enjoy my reaction, you already know what I'm gonna say. Check out the other videos and playlists on my channel. If you watch another video immediately after this one, it helps you to like and push it on my small channel to be recommended so that I have a chance to compete with some of your favorite reactors. Until next time, guys, take care.